And we're back. This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuing coverage of all the best tech action here from the Open Networking Summit, center of the networking transformation. And joining me for this segment are uh, Brent Salisbury uh, and Madhu Venugopal, both from Red Hat. Of course, we're talking a lot about open source, so it's only fitting uh, that we get Red Hat in here. Guys, uh, thank you for joining us on this segment. Sure, thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely, man. Great, so, you know, Open Networking Summit is about a lot of different projects that are going on in open source community in general. Uh, both of you are relatively new to Red Hat, uh, but you're, you're both, you know, very active in uh, the Open Daylight project, so, uh, you know, you're going to go into it a little bit, uh, but Madhu, I mean, maybe uh, you can tell me a little bit about your background with Open Daylight and, uh, you know, what brought you to kind of your current role with Red Hat. Yeah, sure. Uh, I've been with this, uh, I was at Cisco for a lot, very long time, and uh, around 2010 uh, time frame, I was really bored with networking as a whole. It was stale, it was stagnant. I was trying to do the same thing again and again on various versions of the silicon. So then I decided to actually quit networking as a whole and go into the app space. Uh, but I got lucky in 2011 to attend the first ONS right here. Uh, actually, it was Stanford actually. Uh, there, I attended all these sessions by you know uh, Martin Casado and Scott Schenker. It totally inspired me. And uh, after that, we started working on a controller project back at Cisco uh, that actually helped with Open Daylight into the contribution. So I've been working on Open Daylight for Open Daylight base code from 2011 onwards. And uh, early, late uh, last year. I had to join Red Hat because I want to be in the open source way of things. Yeah. So, so did you guys bring your little coin, the, the code yeah. uh, from, from, from Open Daylight? Yeah. We had Dave Meyer on earlier talking about, nice. you know, of course, for open source, it's you know not just being part of the community, but coding is part of it. So, both of you committed a lot of code. Oh yes, and we have the coin. The coin is one of the best things happened to me in my career. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so Brent. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is to give a little bit of that end user viewpoint. So while you're with Red Hat now, you were at University of Kentucky before. Um, can you tell us, you know, why you know you got involved in Open Daylight that project, and you know why, you know, what, what, why did you know sure. did the university care at all? Were you just doing it on your own? You know, how that fit? Yeah, I mean, research and education has a little bit of, you know, they've, they've got plenty of interest in it. Um, a lot of it's from the research side. So you know, I was on architecture operations. Um, I saw the pains up front. I've been doing this for 15 plus years. Uh, nothing's really changed. So, you know, we, we can only go through the same problem over and over and over until, you know, it's either you just quit the industry altogether, go do something else. Um, so it's, it's kind of that time for transformation. Wow, so, so I'm hearing from both of you that, you know, networking has kind of stagnated. Do we feel that, you know, with, you know, the open networking movement that, you know, networking's reinvigorated and something that excites you and should excite people? Yeah, you know, I don't know if we're just freaks of nature. Well, we are freaks of nature, but uh, we're, you know, we're starting to see uh, more and more people from traditional networking come over to, uh, you know, I, th I think there's a little misconception on, yes, code is obviously incredibly important to open source projects, uh, but I'd say for every line of code that we you know, push, uh, there's probably, you know, eight hours behind it, banging your head against the wall, doing integration, um, you know, everything's so new, uh, between the data path, the control, uh, proper architectures to put in, there's just, you know, there's so many places for traditional networking to, you know, and it's the best thing you can ever do for your career. You know? Yeah, so the, the open networking is the best thing that happened to networking as in long while. We all, we all agree on that. As a developer from my uh, from the early career, uh, I feel that this is the f first time I'm having so much, I'm enjoying the coding per se, because the architecture is completely different from what we used to do before. It is centralized, but not completely centralized because we have a distributed architecture clustering and everything. So we are, we feel like, programmers now. Before we feel like network engineers morphed as programmers, but now we are hardcore programmers doing the real things like real programmers do, you know? So it's, it's fun. Yeah, uh, actually, Brian, I'm sure you've seen, you know, there, there's been some articles out there, you know, do networking people, you know, need to become coders? And there's a lot of people that got into networking because they didn't want to code. Uh, you know, yeah. what, what, what's your take on that? What, what are you hearing, you know, kind of your peers in the marketplace? Right, I mean, so to, to manage a virtual x86 environment, do you have to be a programmer? No. To manage a wireless environment, do you have to be a programmer? No. So these are all things that have, you know, some form of fashion, you know, more than anything, we're decoupling things. So we've got a monolithic box, it's black, and there's x86 in it. So it's time to kind of break that apart. 
Yeah, Madhu, I'm wondering if you can t tell us, you know, how much networking is there inside of Red Hat? I mean, obviously, Red Hat's heavily involved in a lot of open source projects. You know, where do you guys sit in the organization? You know, why is it strategic uh, to what you know brought you to Red Hat? And what Red Hat does? Yeah, uh, good question. So, Red Hat uh, is been investing on OpenStack a lot, and uh, in the network virtualization space, uh, we need a solution, a good solution on that. So, uh, that's when uh, it's a good combination for Red Hat to be part of Open Daylight to promote open source and also do something really good in the, in the, on the open networking space. And the reason I personally joined Red Hat is that I was looking for an avenue to be a part of the DNA structure which can do innovation through openness. Uh, and uh, you now I found Red Hat is the perfect spot for me to be a part of. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Brent, would you recommend kind of career path is, you know, we need more people coding. My understanding is Open Daylight's looking for people. What, what What's the pitch for people looking at yeah, this? Yeah, I mean, you know. The beauty is your resume is whatever you've done in the past. You know, so you're either showing some, you know, either repository or code, or you're jumping on IRC, working in open source projects. You've got OpenStack, you've got Open vSwitch, you've got Open Daylight, you've got you know, OpenFlow. Isn't necessarily something you go work on, but you can always do that uh, at your shop. So absolutely, if you go and grind for six months, you can go basically get your dream job wherever you want. It's not going to last forever, um, but you know, you know, the funny thing is everything we're doing. If you look back at history, we've already kind of done that, right? So we come out with, oh, hey, having a decoupled operating system, that's, that's incredibly innovative, right? <laughs> How many server guys do you, you know, think about where you're going, you know, hey, you're going to have to buy Windows and you have to buy this piece of hardware to buy it on? It's kind of bizarre. All right, so, so let's unpack ODL, Open Daylight, for sure. a little bit. Madhu, um, you know, you've been involved for, for, for a long time. Um, you know, some people have said, you know, gosh, you know, this program's been going on for a while, um, you know, why isn't it in production in you know all the data centers around the world? Of course, we know code takes time, maturity takes a while, ecosystem takes a while to build. You know, where are we with you know Open Daylight, and you know, what, what can you give us the update on, on Open oh, Daylight? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, Open Daylight is part of for a while, only from a perspective of the contribution came from a, a big incumbent uh, from the past, but it was looked at from a different perspective before. Uh, for, for thank goodness, the Open Daylight source code originally was in the proper architecture, so we can fit in various use cases on that. So original use cases that was addressed on the Cisco side was not especially on the data center side, just on a very small use case we are addressing on that. And when Open Daylight started late, last year, just around, it was 10 to 11 months now, then it has actually expanded after that. So as, as you know, the past 11 months has been the time when use cases have actually come in and current contribution has been, you can start seeing that. So hydrogen is the first step towards that. I would never say hydrogen is the ultimate release of Open Daylight, it is not. It has been many projects that has been, not even core projects, they are part of it now. They are all in, uh, no, uh, incubation projects and bootstrap projects. So the quality is not there yet. It has a lot of features, a lot of the functionalities. Folks can pick it up and try it out on the lab and you know get the feel of it. But there'll be next releases, Helium in six months, you'll start seeing real, things going on. I mean, we'll see good quality code coming in, real real, uh, real use cases you can start seeing pouring inside. So is it going to be on like a six month release cycle? Is that what we're looking for? Uh, that's the plan as of now. The, the TSC is open in open daylight and everything is open in open daylight. It's a pretty cool thing where uh, that's like the release cadence we have so far is going to be six months. Since we have first release done, the next release is going to di dictate how much is going to be uh, so it's going to be six months to recycle. That's what he hoped for. Yeah. So, so Brent, you know, you, you've done a lot of writing as to how people get up and started on this. You know, what's what's the barrier to entry for somebody to you know get started? How easy is it? You know, where, where would you recommend somebody start? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, a lot of our focus is at the soft edge. So anything that's virtualizable today. Uh, I'm sorry. Explain what the soft edge oh, is. Oh, sure, sure. Right. So. Uh, the server, the servers. We've got hypervisors. We, you know, we're commoditized. That, that's been commoditized for a while. Uh, Red Hat has KVM. Fits perfectly. Um, you know, I love Red Hat because what they do is take proprietary concepts and create platforms out of them that other people can come in and innovate on. Uh, so, just getting to open source in general, getting to know how to push, a, a, you know, scripts, code, anything to a, to a repository, learning any kind of CI tools. Um, you know, just. Learning a vSwitch, incredibly important. Uh, Python, uh, Bash, Linux, all of that's great to start out with, and then you, know, you can move into lower level languages as you, you know, keep going. 
All right. So, uh, wonder if we could shift, shift a little to you know Open Stack. Uh, you know, you, you got used to a little bit involved in that. Oh yeah. Friend you are. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I mean, that's that's been our pretty much obsession for the past few months is getting integration in. Uh, we're still developing out features, but you know, the funny thing is, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of alternatives when it comes to a lot of these things, right? So. Uh, I think the industry is pretty smart to eventually kind of consolidate on a project and let's run with that and kind of focus. I think it probably reduces risk to a lot of the income. Well, so, so that, that's the open source option is what right, you're saying, because right, obviously right. there are a number of oh, you know, cloud options out there. Uh, you want to tell us, I mean, you, you've been kind of hot on the uh, OVSDB, uh, you know, what, what, what's going on there? Yeah, so we've implemented, um, so Nasir VMware, uh, ben Pfaff in particular, working for Martin Casado, put together OVSDB. Uh, he's pretty incredible, so we're just implementing that protocol. Uh, it's a management plane protocol, so you know I know I've talked about OpenFlow a lot. Medu's been working on that project for you know a couple of years. Uh, so that's just one piece, though. So uh, it's a whole lot easier if you can start leveraging kind of multiple direct, multiple angles uh, of the fabric, and so don't necessarily get everything you want out of just something like OpenFlow, so now you can kind of cross-reference that. It becomes particularly important when we're coding. So you've got basically OpenStack coming in from one direction, you've got OVSDB coming in from another, and the controller's coming down, giving you more information. On top of that, you've got a northbound API that's feeding you information. So a lot of air checking and a lot of uh, correlation there. Yeah, so I had Dave Meyer on earlier, and he, you know, was, was very clear about the openness of the project and how the APIs yeah. would necessary, you know, would needed to stay open. But you know, I think that's one of the concerns people have is, you know, how how open this will be. Um, you know, Mato, can you you give your perspective on you know what you've seen both, you know, you're on the Cisco side now you're on the Red Hat side, you know, heavily involved. Um, you know, is this just a control play uh, from the vendor community, or you know, is, is it truly going to be an open project? I sure hope only not, because uh, the, if you look at the, the OpenDLA as a community, right? Yes, it is made of a lot of engineers from various vendors, but end of the day, we are all developers working on a common cause. And if, uh, if you log into the uh, chat, or if you look at the uh, emails, look at the TSC calls, it, it's very clear that it's all open, it's all about open. It is nothing about the, the community, and uh, everything is about the community, really. And the vendors actually are doing a great favor by, by, by giving resources and uh, in great engineers for the project. And everybody's trying to find the find their place in SDN, and everybody's trying really hard to be part of Open Daylight and doing great things. And Red Hat, as you know, it's, uh, they can shepherd open process projects really well because it's their bread and butter. And we being part of Red Hat is it's good for us, personally, because we are really seeing what is an open source way of doing things. Also, we can, we can coach people who are from other vendors to see exactly what is open source and how to play in the open source as a community. Uh, so it's a win-win. So Open Daylight is one of the most open projects you will see. And uh, whatever you hear is exactly what is being done inside as well. So TAC calls, TWS, everything is open. And me, as a developer, I'm completely into the upstream. There's no downstream work that I personally work on. Same with Brent. So it's, it's been a fun ride for you. Great. So, Madhu, uh, I'm, I'm curious. Are you guys involved? You know, once you know the, the first release is done, you know, how does that go into the services and the products? Um, you know, both Red Hat and engagement with uh, with uh, you know customers. Is that something you guys are involved in, or do you help with the training of uh, you know other folks inside your organization? Uh, good point. I mean, first release, as I explained, the first release is not going to be the the production release. The first release has been a great place for us to even talk to the customers, talk to anybody that we partner with. Uh, at this point in time, we, myself and Brent at least, right, we are upstream guys at this point, and we are helping our management to explain what is SDN, because SDN is new to all of us, including Red Hat. So we are trying to explain where Red Hat can play a role, and how we can really uh, help the community and the customers to break this ice on SDN, coach them on what SDN is and how we can, how we can make a difference. So from a product standpoint, the CTO office will actually work with the product within the, within the Red Hat to see what we can do with Open Daylight, maybe down the line, once you get a good solid base, yeah. Great, so, uh, you know, you've been meeting with people at the show, you, you've been going around, uh, what, what, what have you seen so far, what, what, what's your take, Brent? Uh, well, 
we've been probably nonstop doing demos on stage and presentations. So you know, we're both probably pretty brain dead at this point. Uh, <laughs> you know, we we met with uh, you know Martin this morning. That, you know, he's just incredibly inspirational to both of us. So uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, you know. I think we're still defining exactly what it is we're trying to, you know, I mean, the, the, the clear, the killer, so if, if, if we're looking for the killer application, it's pretty, pretty obvious that it's going to be network virtualization out the gate. Uh, that's not a new idea. That's something, you know, VMware has you know, paid plenty of money to get. Uh, that killer application of that application is pretty apparently going to be uh, OpenStack. So, and I think the long tail of OpenStack is as we have, as NFV kind of crops up, which is becoming network function virtualization, where you take x86 compute off the shelf, you basically drive traffic uh, at the edge of networks through it to do traditional black box services, load balancing, firewalling, all the, all the insane carrier acronyms. Uh, so that, I think, is going to just incorporate OpenStack because, you know, once we nail down all these services, now we can just distribute it out to telcos, pops, you know, wherever it needs to be. And there's real CapEx and OpEx savings because to do SDN, it requires storage and compute orchestration also is kind of the key there. Network-centric approaches, just our network-centric approaches. We've kind of had that. We don't need to reinvent the wheel completely, so. A lot of takeaways from the show? The show? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Cube, uh, we have been uh, watching Cube for many, many uh, yeah. uh, uh, interviews, right? <laughs> and Brent has been a, a star about you a lot. And uh, whenever I watch the Cube interviews, I get inspired. Yeah. Especially whenever I see Martin Gasser talk about that. It, Martin is, our, is my hero, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's obvious. Uh, and uh, we watch many interviews, and especially Martin's interviews were so cool, where he talks about his team a lot, right? And the way he's down to earth and the way they, they have opened up the, the entire space. And thanks for you guys for bringing them as persons to, so we, 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 can, we, can, we can see them as individuals, not as the CTOs of the companies, right? Yeah. So it's inspiring for all of us. It's really inspiring for all of us. And thanks for you guys for being oh, here. No, yeah. Hey, we Absolutely. appreciate you guys coming on and, yeah. and support. You know, uh, we, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, open source coverage. Uh, I'm excited that the Cube, uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, uh, in April, we're going to be at the Red Hat Summit, uh, yes. you know, in, uh, in San Francisco at Moscone, which is the 10th anniversary show. In May, we're going to be at the OpenStack Summit. So, you know, absolutely, we're, you know, doubling down on our coverage in this yeah. area. Um, so, uh, you just guys want to give you kind of, you know, last closing thoughts as to, you know, meeting with customers here and there, you know, uh, you know, their take on ODL and what's going on there. Um, you know, what, should, what, what do you think people should uh, be, you know, looking to do and taking away from, from this event and, and what's going on recently? Uh, Madhu, start with you. Yeah, uh, so one thing I want to shout out to the entire community is that open source project like Open Daylight is not just for the programmers. It's for network admins, network architects, and so on and so forth. And the contributions can come from any place. It need not from the developers alone. It can come from network architects who can come and give their uh, use cases to us. It can come from you who can promote uh, what we are doing out there. It's really open to, to remove all the doubts from the customers' minds and so on and so forth. So uh, Open Internet is one of the best projects out there. And my, my wish is that everybody should come and participate, at least on the TSC calls and TWS calls, to know really how open it is. And, Give your contribution, code or otherwise. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, where, where else, you know, in, in the history of computing, of, of network computing, can you just say, I want to go work with the best of the best in the world, uh, you know, I mean, to work with you know, my brother here, Madhu, I mean, it, it's pretty phenomenal. So I just can't encourage enough for people in networking today to just, you know, at least step outside the box and evolve a little bit. Uh, you know, at the very least, you're going to just, it's going to open up new worlds to you, whether it's jobs, whether it's intellectually. Uh, you know, the opportunity is here. It's just up to you to do it. Yeah. So, Brent, Madhu, thank you so much for joining on this segment. Love to get your viewpoint where Red Hat's sitting at in the community. It's about community, it's about code, and it's about transformation and networking. This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org. The Cube will be right back with our next guest from Open Networking Summit 2014. <laughs>